All right, guys, so outspoken critic of critical race theory and Florida mom, who's a part of the group Moms for Liberty, um, did a event in Virginia in which she spoke about fighting indoctrination in our school systems on a national scale. Now, again, Miss Quisha here has been very outspoken about critical race theory. She's been very against it. I'm pretty sure that she's had videos go viral before. But in this video, in this speech, she got a standing ovation when she suggested that parents have a mass exodus from public schools in response to the FBI potentially labeling parents as domestic terrorists for speaking up against woke indoctrination and mandates that they don't agree with in the classroom. Take a look. I don't think parents realize just how pervasive it is. I know in Duval County, I found critical race theory workshops and events um, as far back as 2011. And I'm sure there are, are other things before that because obviously it had to be something before that for it to even be a workshop. So um, I think understanding that they are not kidding this is not going away the enemy has no chill and is advancing forward as fast we can see it i mean you're at home wanting trying to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for your kids and the fbi could be knocking at your door because you might have said the wrong thing at a school board meeting these people they're not they are serious they want to silence us and shut us down um I really think at this point, the only thing to do is have a mass exodus from the public school system. That's it. Wow, thank, thank you. Yeah, I agree 100% with her. <laughs> I 100% agree. And I'm pretty sure Miss Quisha uh, definitely watches my channel, right? I've definitely seen her uh, retweet some of my videos. So, Quisha, uh, if you're watching, um, you're more than happy to come on the channel and to talk about this stuff, right? I'm always looking for interesting people to talk to. But I 100% agree with you. I do 100% agree. And I, I would add on top of that that, yes, there definitely needs to be a mass exodus but also um you know parents who can't necessarily take their children out of public schools who can't necessarily afford it you know that's the unfortunate reality have to be involved in terms of um voting in these school boards right like who is being put on these leadership positions in these school boards right because at the end of the day what she's saying in regards to the uh threat right whether that's from the fbi you know whether it's from the government whether it's like culturally all that stuff is 100% true. It's a 100% true. Um, the culture war has become institutionalized, guys, right? It's coming from the federal government, okay? We have the FBI, for all the things they should be worried about in the world, um, it took them literally less than a few days after the school boards reached out to them to say, hey, you know, we want to uh, start treating parents as domestic terrorists for them to respond, okay? It took them literally a few days, this is the same FBI that does not track uh, the activities of Antifa or BLM, okay? So legitimate domestic terror threats in this country, they don't care about that, right? They don't care about that whatsoever. But when it comes to parents protesting at a school board, oh, they got to get on that real quick, right? They can't waste any time. So again, what she's saying is correct. This has now become institutional. There's the institutional war on traditional and conservative values in this country. And again, it's not just happening at the federal government, right? When it comes to FBI audits, it's also happening in corporate America, right? It's happening in schools. It's happening on social media. It's happening everywhere. And I think that's what people have to realize. And the best way to fight back against this is through education. It is through the school system. Because the Democrats and the left, they're taking advantage of the school system. OK, that's why they get so butthurt about the whole critical race theory thing. Why are parents pushing back against critical race theory? Because at first they try to say, well, critical th race theory is not even taught in schools. Right. What are you guys talking about? You guys are making it up. 
So GOP, <laughs> the state legislators, they move to ban critical race theory and the Democrats get upset, right? The left gets upset. And I'm like, well, if you're not teach, teaching it in schools, then what are you so upset for? Because if they're banning critical race theory in schools and critical race theory is not being taught in school like you say it's not, then you shouldn't be upset about anything. Essentially, the, the GOP isn't doing anything. But they're upset because what's happening is, is that their race-based education can no longer be taught in schools. And I want to be clear about this because some people may think that, oh, it sounds like you're trying to um, ban the teaching of, you know, racial uh, historical events in school. No, that's not what it is, right? Everybody learns about slavery. Everybody learns about Jim Crow. Everybody learns about the civil rights movement. Everybody knows what black people have been through in this country, right? Everybody knows that. What The problem with critical race theory is that they try to put that narrative on steroids, right? Where they look at everything, our laws, our institutions, all of our history through the lens of race, okay? That's how you get something like the 1619 Project, which essentially uh, tries to make the claim that this country was founded based off race, right? And racism, okay? They try to switch the narrative, right? They try to make everything about race. And I think that's an issue, right? They're trying to push the idea that there are a group of people in this country, mainly white people, that are superior to everybody else. And that the reason why, you know, somebody that is black can't concede, can't succeed in this country is not because of their own doing or personal responsibility. It's because of the white man. OK, and that is something that um, white parents and black parents, a lot of them don't want their kids being taught in school. And to me, you know, what she's saying is so powerful for multiple reasons. One of the reasons is that, you know, I know that Republicans and conservatives, they don't like to play identity politics, but, you know, the fact that a black mother is saying this kind of breaks through the main argument that Democrats and leftists are making in regards to critical race theory and the pushback against it, in which they're just saying that it's, you know, just white people. It's white Trump supporters. It is racist in this country that don't want this. For example, watch Virginia Democratic Governor Terry McAuliffe essentially argue that, <laughs> Opponents of critical race theory are racist. And Ta-Nehisi Coates uh, go and give an interview in which he basically says that the only people that are concerned about critical race theory are white people. Take a look. In school. So how do you define it? it, it Anita, it is not taught here in Virginia. But how do you define it? Doesn't matter. It's not taught here in well, Virginia. So I'm not going to spend my time. On, on what it is. I'm not even spending my time because the school board and everyone else has come out and said it's not taught. It's racist. It's a dog whistle. But if we don't have a definition, how can we say it's racist? I just want a definition from yeah. you. It, it's not taught here in Virginia. We can ask about any topic. Here's what I've said all along, and it really bothers me. You know, I re it really bothers me. This whole idea of stirring parents up to create di divisions. Our children are going through such challenges today because of COVID, and we're talking about something here today, wasting precious viewers' time. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's look at this. Four of the top ten books were banned because of it's called anti-black racism is that a coincidence to you what do you make of that no i don't, I don't think it's a coincidence yeah. at all um i think for most of american history uh, african-american authors have not had the purchase uh, on the american conscience that they have right now we've always talked among ourselves uh mostly the dialogue in terms of books has been amongst ourselves you're at a moment where you know people like ibram kendi people like nicole hannah jones they're reaching a lot of people even sells a lot of books the 1619 project was seen by a lot of people mm -hmm. so this is really about white people and particularly white children now being exposed to ideas that I think previously were, were segregated, frankly. So does it make parents and teachers uncomfortable? Is that Why do you think it's happening? I don't know that it even makes uh, parents and teachers uncomfortable. I think it makes um, certain politicians in our system uncomfortable. Um, the 1619 Project was cited in an uh, executive order. Mm -hmm. um, there are laws, for instance, passed in Texas that specifically mention this work. Yep. So this is the state. This isn't just, you know, Local I don't want, exactly. I don't want my kid reading this. This is actually state action. Uh, banning some of this work. What are All right, guys. So there you have it. You have the Virginia governor, uh, Terry McAuliffe, who seems like every time he opens his mouth, he makes a fool out of himself, <laughs> basically saying that I can't define critical race theory, but anybody that's opposed to it is a racist, right? You're racist if you're opposed to critical race theory. Then you have Mr. Tanahani Colts, who is a uh, career race hustler, uh, just like Ibram X. Kendi and Nicole Hannah Jones and all the other people, right? You know the authors. He says, well, only white people are concerned about this. Specifically, white people are concerned about this for their white children because they're getting exposed to uh, ideas that was otherwise segregated, right? And the reason why I show those clips, guys, is that that is the main Democrat argument against the whole critical race theory thing. At first, it was, 
It's not being taught in schools. Once that narrative kind of fell apart, because at the very least, yes, you can say that is the law course of critical race theory being taught in schools. No, but is the curriculum and school policies being implemented based off of some of the tenets and some of the ideas of critical race theory, that is a definitive yes, right? That is a definitive yes in terms of how kids are being graded, in terms of how teachers interact with kids, all types of stuff, guys. That stuff has been affected by the ideas of critical race theory, right? And the ideas of anti-racism. That's the issue, right? That's the big issue. So, yeah, the Democrat talking point now is that, well, if you're opposed to this, then you're a racist. Okay, and that's why, you know, Miss Quisha King here, you know, being a black woman saying this is is so powerful because it directly rebutes the Democrat argument argument that the only people that are concerned about this are uh, white parents who are Trump supporters and that happen to be racist. What can you say to her? What can you say to this black parent who has been very, very outspoken about this? She's not the only black parent that's been outspoken about this. I've seen other parents. I've showed you guys in my videos other parents that are concerned about this as well, okay? So this is not an issue of black and white or uh, anything like that. It's an issue of parents just don't want their children to be taught this stuff. And because the left is so gun ho about kids being taught this stuff, about them being indoctrinated, they get so upset and mad when parents oppose it, okay? Because they'll tell you out of one side of their mouth, it's a waste of time, it doesn't exist, blah, blah, blah. And then out of the other side of their mouth, They'll act like uh, parents are terrorists for opposing something that they say is a waste of time, right? Something they say doesn't exist. It doesn't make sense. So that's how you know that this is a core ideological tenet that is being used to indoctrinate students in the uh, ideas and the philosophy that the left wants. And again, this is why they get so upset when you get pushback from parents because it gets directly in the way of their agenda, okay? So ultimately, uh, what Miss Quisha here was saying, again, it's true. I mean, listen, you know, if you can, you know, if I had kids, what I would do is, hey, I wouldn't have my kids in public school, right? That's one of the reasons why I don't have kids yet, because I want to make sure I'm in a financial situation where I can send them to the best school possible, where I don't have to worry about this woke indoctrination, okay? That's just me personally. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.